Hello folks and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party and let's try Solar Flux. It's by Firebrand Games. It's available for $9.99 on Steam. It's available only on Windows right now. It's also available on iOS for $3.99. Now I don't know if it's a different version on iOS or not. You might want to look into that if you want to pick it up for your iPod or iPhone or whatever it is you want to play it on. It does support Steam achievements and Steam trading cards as well as leaderboards which we will get into later. But for now, let's hop straight into the game. Now, this is kind of a physics zero gravity based puzzler game. Let's go ahead and hop in one of the earlier missions to kind of show you how the game starts off and the various challenges that it will throw at you. So you do have these various universes with various challenges, as you would expect with many games. You have to finish this one universe before you can progress to the second, which you then need to pr finish to get to the next, etc., etc. And assumingly, the universes present new challenges and make the game more difficult overall. There's also a three star rating system. And it's interesting because each mission is scored differently. So for example, these missions are scored based on how much fuel you you use or don't use. These are based on how much damage your ship has taken or not taken. And this is based, your score is based on how long it takes you to complete the mission. So very interesting mix up of scores there. I personally prefer the gas ones, probably because they're the easiest for me to do. I'm not very good at this game is a fair warning. So let's go ahead and start off. Now the premise is that the suns in these various universes are dying and your job is to collect these, these plasma balls, which just happen to be floating about space, shoot them at the suns and stabilize them, saving the universe. Now this is our launch ship and we can aim it like this. We basically, to aim, you go behind the ship and left click and hold. You can change that in the options though. So if you want to actually point to where you want to go, you can point, you can change that in the options so that I would point up here if I wanted to shoot the ship out here or to fly. However, it does seem like that makes it a little bit too, well, makes it a little easier, I think. Anyway, so let's go ahead and shoot so we can grab these plasma orbs. Now, as you'll see, we'll actually get grabbed by these planets' orbitational pulls, or gravitational pulls, rather, rather. And we've gotten three of these solar flares. We're at 30%. In other words, we can stabilize 30% of a sun if we shoot these now. This sun is at 70%, so it needs a 30% to stabilize it. So, and another thing is, once you shoot the flares at the sun, it sends out a burst, which will push you. So because we want to use the least amount of fuel as possible, we're actually going to time our orbit so that we shoot at the sun and the burst shoots us into another orbit. We'll see if this actually works. I probably will get it on the first try, but let's see, as you see, it pushes us out. And nope, we ended up docking with our own space station again. So we're going to actually wait until we get back around this side and pop into here. Try to use this list as low of gas as possible. And as you can see up here at the top right, you can see our total ranking so far. Right now we're at two out of three because we use too much gas because this is doable without using any gas by using the solar pulse to push you onto this orbit, grab them all and shoot this into here. So for those of you who like to do score attacks and if you like to try these puzzles over and over again to get the best score possible, definitely might want to keep watching. So we've got 40%, let's go ahead and shoot it at the sun. That will stabilize the sun and that will be the mission over. It would give you your general, how well you did on the mission. Uh, we used 3% of our fuel, which doesn't seem like much, but it was more than was necessary. So we've gotten two out of three stars. You can also check the leaderboards to see where you rank. Obviously, I do not rank very high because I didn't do that well. I don't think you can scroll through the leaderboards, though, because if you push up here, uh, again, it has like your friend's version of the leaderboard, so you can see how your friends are doing which I have no friends, so be sad. Okay, so you can see the top players at least, but it'd be nice to be able to scroll the leaderboards. Maybe they can get that in an update later on, but you can at least see the type of scores the top people are getting, 10,000, 9,800. Uh, I'm very close with my 2,700. Not at all, he said. So once it's done, again, you can try trying it again. Let's try it one more time. Let's see if we can get it this time. And early, keep in mind again, this is early on. I'll explain some of the other mechanics while we, we wait here. You can see just barely here behind this planet, there's a shadow. 
going behind it that the sun is casting. When we're close to the sun, and again, you can see just to barely see a graphic, especially on YouTube, you might need to maximize the video, but you can see a small graphic where the shield is taking damage because of we're getting so close to the sun. And if you look over here, you can actually see the shield take damage, take damage, but then once we go behind the, the, the cover, behind the shadow, we're not being blasted by the sun's rays. So the shield actually has a chance to recoup. This plays a big effect, big part later on. One, because you'll be taking damage while trying to collect the, collect the flares. And two, again, mini missions give you a better score based on the amount of damage your ship takes. Because once you hit zero shield, you automatically explode and must do the stage over. So let's try to do this again. This time we're gonna do it earlier. Oh, you can also right click. So if you're if you know what you need to do and you mess it up, you can right click and then choose restart and it restarts it pretty quickly here. So let's shoot way earlier. You definitely don't want to run into the sun though. Ah. All right, we'll try one more time. Try one more time. And then we'll try some other different stages just so you can see the different mechanics that go on here. I imagine a lot of you probably already can tell if this is going to be the type of game you're into. I waited too long, I think. All right. I really want to get it one more time. Promise one more time. But yeah, a lot of you could probably tell. At first, I thought this was going to be a game. Like, I, I think I think it's Solar 2. Nope, still too late. I think maybe I should wait. Uh, I think you're supposed to wait. Anyway, let's go ahead and exit out of here. But at first, I thought this was going to be like Solar 2 or Osmosis. Where you start off as something small and you grab smaller things. And you get larger and then you get your own orbitational pull. But you have to use the orbitational pull of other planets to get other things and then eventually you're swallowing planets which allows you to swallow suns at first i thought this with this game was like this game is absolutely in no way shape or form like that at all let's try let's see voyager this is a different set of missions let's try one of these shield ones which i am awful at bend let's see how we do here we're probably going to take a lot of damage because as i've said i'm not good at this game at all so this one actually needs two however you can shoot early if you want However, you do have to pay attention. Oh, as we can see here, I'll just show you. Well, if you also, if you shoot too far, our shields will go away here and we'll blow up. So obviously you do not want that to happen because your skill, your score will be bad. You will also be dead, which is also an unfortunate side effect. So this time, let's try to get really close to the sun so we can arc it. Try to get this. Uh, there we go. But we still took significant amount of damage. So we only took one star. I'm guessing what they want you to do is go around the back. Maybe? Well, no, because you have to get those. I'm not sure how to do that. So I'm just going to pick some more random stages. Again, to kind of show you the kind of puzzles you'll be going at. Here's the last... Oh, wait. Here's the last stage for Helios. The universe Helios. This one was actually pretty easy. Now, this is an interesting, interesting one because the sun actually pulses constantly. Oh, wow. Okay, I don't know what happened there. But the sun uh, pulses once in a while. And it doesn't pulse when you shoot these into it. These aren't the same color as the normal plasmas. So I'm not sure what they're different. I think it might have told me at one point, but I missed it. Now the idea here, which I'm obviously doing very, very poorly, is to stay behind these planets as they rotate. To shield you from the pulses. Let's go ahead and shoot these. As you can see, it doesn't pulse when we do that. And I actually don't know if there's any... Oh, wow, I hit the, the asteroid. I was paying attention. I don't know if shooting at the sun, these types of suns, the ones that are supercharged, as you can see, it's actually at 170%. So you want to stay behind these planets if you can. Luckily, the range at which you grab these... Whatever they are, these plasmas or what have you, is pretty generous because I, I'm i not really typically into space type games where you control these, oh, okay, eh, we'll just shoot it here. Good, last mission. I'm not really normally into these space type games where you have to fight gravity and have to factor in all these things. Not really my genre of things. This game is pretty fun to play honestly uh, definitely as i mentioned not up my alley though typically now there's also extra 
or bonus galaxies that you can unlock. It says beyond, collect 55 galaxy stars to unlock. I only have 28 because I am terrible at this game through uh, no fault of the game itself. I just suck at it. As you can see, uh, only very few have I gotten three or two. Most of them are just one star, barely passing them. So let's check the next galaxy. I actually like the look of this one, Oceanus. We'll try the first one. Excuse me. So it, graphically, I'm a big fan of this look. Uh, and the timer doesn't start until you actually shoot out of your spaceship, which is good. But the idea here is, again, we are based on time this time, not fuel or anything else. So we are okay with using fuel. Unfortunately, I broke that. And I'm going to crash into my death. One nice thing, and this has actually saved me some frustration, is that if you... Like, let's say I shoot the plasma load that sounded really horrible let's just say I shoot the plasma at the Sun and as I shoot it oops I shoot it and it hits the Sun but then I immediately run into an asteroid and die or my my shields give out and I burn up I, I that actually doesn't affect you as long as you get that plasma into the Sun before your ship is destroyed you can die right after and you are fine so that's Nice. Oh boy, that was close. I'm pretty sure everybody in this ship might have just peed a little. Maybe just a little. Go ahead and just use our gravity, which I don't know why I'm bothering. Let's see, oh, I can fly into this. Boom. Crash, and it's the game still like, hey, mission complete. Everyone died. But hey, at least the sun is stabilized. So you sacrificed yourself. Let's try one more. I think you get an idea what this game is like. I don't think I've tried this one, which is probably going to mean. Oh God, that it's going to be very bad for me. And uh, my guess is correct. So yes, they introduce asteroids in these areas, which you obviously need to avoid. This sun's only at 30%, so it needs a lot of plasma love. By the way, if you make a band called In Need of Plasma Love, I get all rights, or at least all I ask for is really 10% of your commissions. We'll try this a few times. Not going to bore you guys with me being god awful at this and trying to solve it. Again, you get the idea of the game, I think. Uh, you can zoom in and out, I just realized. All right, let's try it one more time. Overall, what do I like about this game? Uh, graphically, it looks good. I, I like the background music, it has that calming space ambience to it that a lot of these types of games tend to have, uh, which I quite enjoy. Again, graphically, it tells you everything you need to know very easily. There's no ambiguity as to what you can run into and what are the plasma things and where are the orbits, things like that. That's all very easy to discern. Can we need, oh God, nope, nope, we hit the sun, don't hit the sun. Now these suns obviously aren't as hot, so my shields are not blowing up. I think that the big goal here is just not to ram into the asteroids. Ah, I thought I had the orbit in my, in my favor there, but apparently it wasn't quite enough. I think I'm going to kick myself out of it actually. So it does a good job there. The puzzles are interesting and they're definitely can be difficult or again, maybe I'm just absolutely terrible, but uh, they definitely difficult based on a lot of its uh, on several factors, one being timing. Again, you know, trying to time getting through here because not only are you trying to get through, but you're having to compensate for your inertia and the fact there's no gravity. Well, except for these orbits. So you're having to compensate for that. So it's not just, a, oh, I'll stand there like you would in a typical like platformer, say, and I'll just wait for the, the giant ass to go by, then I'll, you know, run forward. You actually have to think ahead of time and think, okay, well, it's going to take a second for my boosters to be able to push me through the hole in the asteroid. So I might need to work a little, uh, you know, plan ahead and start shooting before normally I would be need to need to. This one's rough. Come on, get in that orbit. Oh, hmm, there's another ship, which I don't even know how you would get in there. I will not be trying it. And of course I ran right into it. There's other things, again, not as big of a deal in this mission, but in others, 
where you're exposed to the sun a lot, so you have to worry about your shields or worry about your fuel because the pulses push, like the sun's at auto pulse can be a big drain on your fuel. So you have to, again, try to avoid the pulses or, you know, use them to your advantage. So if you've got some some of these uh, plasma things closer up, you might want to get those first and then use the, the auto pulse to push you back out to grab the others. So there's a lot of uh, strategy and planning in that, and I think that's cool. Now, what do I not like? Personally, my grievances are frankly personal. I, I don't, or just, well, just for me. Uh, see, that, that little boost shot me out. And that's, again, that's kind of one of my grievances. I don't like this type of game where you have to do your boosters and factor in the gravity and all of that. That's personally not my thing. Like, I end up just getting really frustrated because I tend to hate doing the same thing over and over. And as with this map, as you can see, I'm having to do the same thing over and over just to get to the part where I keep dying. So then I get frustrated and I get in a hurry and then I end up, you know, slamming into the planet or into the sun or screwing up and dying early. So I just end up getting more and more frustrated. So this is definitely the type of game more for those of you who have patience and or those of you who like kind of the the space physics, I guess we should, I'll, I'll call it. Hey, we actually made a three pack. Oh God, no, no, no. Oh, okay. I was like, oh God, that's bad. So you can also hover around your spaceships or your, your docking stations. They give you fuel. However, don't think you can cheese the score that way. The score is, if a score is based off of how much, uh, how much gas you've used, just filling up doesn't count. It actually looks at how much you used, not how much you have left, if that makes sense. You also see it took me longer to get into that orbit because I'm further out. It does take longer for the orbit to grab you and mess up your inertia. Okay, oops, our, our shields are hurting. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get a shot off. Come on. Ah. Another second. Maybe two seconds and I think I could have got it. But anyway, yeah, again, my my qualms are... I'm not into this type of game myself. But again, I think those of you who would be interested in this probably can tell pretty quickly that if you're going to be into it or not. Unfortunately, there's not a demo that I could find. However, again, it is only $9.99. And it is available for iOS, but it seems like it'd be a pretty good game for being on the go. So yeah, definitely check out Solar Flux. I will put a link to this game in the description of the video below. So definitely check it out. Thank you guys for watching. Like my videos if you like them. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more Let's Try videos of new games coming out. And I will see you next time.